take any questions or suggestions for maps. <laughs> I've got some questions. So we're talking through the China example, what were some of the tools used in ArcGIS or QGIS or were you in a whole different set of tools that every Yeah, step? for <clears throat> for more artistic maps or prints, uh, there's not a lot of what we call it spatial. It's uh, in terms of our tools, you know, like you know, digging down into actual data and what data that might be attached to that. Um, so really, it's it's a fairly simple process. Um, essentially, just gathering the data, gathering the layers, and uh, just uh, formatting uh, the extent that you want, and just exporting that into the poster. So, like you're literally an illustrator the whole time. Uh, well, we gathered the data in ArcMap. Okay, ArcMap. Yes. So, or ArcGIS, whatever you want to call it. So that's commercial, what's the open source one? Is that doable? Uh, QGIS. QGIS. Yeah, it's, it's okay. basically the same. So this is, uh, again, he said Esri is kind of like a leader in this type of software, and it's the most used, at least. Um, it, it's basically what I use in my daily work at UIC. And uh, it has, a, it has. I don't know, I, I don't know how exactly you compare it. Someone might be able to answer that question better, how, it, how QGIS compares to ArcMap. Um, there's definitely uh, a lot more you could probably, there's a lot of plugins that you can use in uh, QGIS, and so it's endlessly adaptable. Um, ArcGIS is kind of uh, not so much. Uh, it's, it is what it is. Uh, as far as, um, it's good to know that uh, if you work at a nonprofit or if you have a 501c3, you can get pretty much as many free for like $100 as re licenses as you want. Yeah. Otherwise, it's like fifteen hundred dollars. Yeah. It's pretty nuts. Nice. Um, so we could, I mean, we could use QGIS, and I've done it before to actually export this. So there's nothing really inherent in our art map that uh, limits you from doing anything with any other program. So, yeah. so what's your bottom line? Like, how do you make most of your revenue? Is it through these like custom maps? Or because obviously it's a lot of work to like digitize all that data and like clean it up. Um, so I haven't really broken it down percentage wise, but uh, I would say <coughs> fifty well I'd say seventy five percent um, are actually uh, we have a marketplace on Etsy. And so when we finish a map, we'll put it on Etsy for just you know regular purchase. And obviously the custom price is gonna be much higher than something on Etsy. So I'd say maybe a 75-25 split, and the rest is you know custom, custom work. And we're actually poised right now to uh, kind of branch out and actually become more of a full-service GIS uh, firm rather than just you know making static paper just, you know, maps. So we're kind of you know it's it's been kind of a long time coming, but we're you know finally talking about how we can move forward with our business model. Um, but for right now, it's it's more of an aesthetic kind of endeavor. Yeah, we also we do some craft fairs like Renegade Craft Fair is a really good one for us. Yeah, and definitely good exposure uh, just because of the sheer volume of people that come by. Um, so that's kind of a big marketing opportunity. And then we also do as much as we can to get stuff up at coffee shops. So we have some stuff at the Big Shoulders Coffee uh, and Ugly Mug Cafe. We recently intelligence. Re re recently collaborated with a design organization. It's the most generic name ever, but it's a architecture firm here, and uh, they are uh, part of a charity event for fallen firefighters. And so, along with other architecture firms, they wanted. Uh, Essentially, they wanted to paste a uh, some sort of image on uh, a, an Eames chair, um, which is kind of an ergonomic uh, plywood type of chair, a very kind of a modern looking chair. So, not only do we do you know walls, we can also do your chairs. <laughs> but that's it. Only chairs and walls. Nice. So we talked a lot about like OpenStreetMap is deficient in its quality of data um, and how much work you put into annotating the data or, or re, I guess, putting a lot of manual effort into that. Um, and I can see that's sort of like kind of your bread and butter. So I'm wondering, how, do you have any, do you release, do you put anything back out there? Like, do you ever 
contribute that to OpenStreetMap? Uh, like we don't currently. Um, I talked to Steve Mance about this, and there are some kind of boundaries, or uh, I guess, what's the, what am I looking for there? Any restrictions? Or restrictions, license? yeah. So not, not it's not an excuse or anything, but um, for instance, we we actually um, <coughs> digitized about twenty thousand billion footprints in Milwaukee um, because they just didn't exist. And uh, when I was talking to Steve, he mentioned that if you put all of that data up at once, people are going to kind of be suspect of that. Where did you mm -hmm. get it? Yeah. You know, like maybe this doesn't belong here. Right, right. And so uh, we really, you know, we really should uh, add all of our data up there, especially, and we should. Probably notify the city of Chicago, or maybe not. Uh, we're, we're, I don't know. We uh, we definitely need to do that. So in terms of actually sharing our own data, um, we haven't done so much as maybe we should. So, so for the city of Chicago, we actually have all of the footprints up on GitHub as GeoJSON, and they has in the past accepted pull requests okay. on that data set. So that's like an open channel. Like Ian Gies, who's a, who comes to these events uh, often, uh, took the city's building footprints, and he's the one that put it into OpenStreetMap. Uh -huh. And he was doing that. He did what we kind of described, where he kind of eyeballed an area, and, oh, this building's not here anymore, this one got clipped. Sure. He fixed it, and then told the city about it and pushed up changes, sure. which they then merged. So that's, good to know. that's a, like an open avenue. Um, but I mean, I'm sure someone from the city, like I think Tom Shank is really, but he's, uh, he's the guy who would talk to talk to about that. Oh, I'm wondering, can you explain more about the both the process and the outcomes for the um, mapping childhood health outcomes data? And um, yeah, what if, what what exactly were you looking at, and what's the potential impact of the project? Uh, so the project I was working on, it was a pretty large grant um, from the Robert Wood Foundation, uh, Robert Wood Johnson Foundation. Um, they look at a lot of you know childhood health issues, and uh, basically for the last three years, um, teams have been sent out into the field, and like I said before, they essentially survey the built environment, and not only the built environment, so streets and sidewalks and speed limits and all that, but they actually go into uh, fast food stores, um, other uh, or fast food restaurants, other food stores, actually um, check out physical activity centers. And so all this data uh, is aggregated. And I can't really say, to, uh, I can't really talk about any results because it's still kind of, every, all the data is still being gathered. Um, so I guess the, the concept really is, um, you know, if, if you're if you're in a community where it's more walkable, um, you don't have to drive everywhere. You can get around by bike. Um, you can cross the street safely. You have access to physical activity centers. Then chances are your uh, the overall rate of childhood obesity in your community is probably going to be low. So that's kind of the uh, the concept there. Um, this is really. Yeah. Um, I don't know if that answers your question. Um, uh, sure. I mean, I, I guess I'm curious. So, is it part of a larger initiative of the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation to strategically decide where to put health assets and resources, or? Uh, it's more about um, influencing like public policy, and uh, a lot of what they do, um, they deal with like uh, sugar taxes or sugar sugary beverage taxes. Oh, interesting. So that's that's there's a lot of different facets to it. So that's one way of showing. Kind of like correlating how um, I guess that's different from the built environment, but again, they're going into food stores and you know they're they're actually looking at the pri the price of you know soda uh -huh. in that in that particular area. So there's hundreds of different variables that are collected to kind of help make these like connections. So it's a pretty massive project and I'm kind of not not the best person to talk about the whole big picture, but uh, yeah. There you go. Pushing that through. Oh, yeah. um, how do you deal with uh, flattening the maps? You know, obviously the world is around, you know, flattening oh, sure. Um Also, can you can you add, like, weights to different things? Like, you know, I want the water to be more true to size, or... Uh, and how is that... How do you deal with the discrepancies? Uh, so, any GIS analyst will tell you that there's something called uh, 
at geographic projection, which is essentially um, depicting a 3D surface on a 2D uh, plane. And so uh, we actually, there's tools in ArcMap that essentially allow you to, you just basically click a button, you can just change it to uh, a, what's, I guess we call a local uh, projected coordinate system. And so what I'm using for Chicago is the Illinois, uh, can you help me out? Illinois uh, State Plain, 1201 feet, or whatever. There's <laughs> crazy. Don't NAD, 1983, whatever. It's just this ridiculous code. Yeah. Um, but if you use that projection, say, uh, for Antarctica, then that, that image is going to be skewed. Uh, I wish I could show you something uh, right now, but uh, there's definitely a local projections that would be most appropriate for just given the context of, of your map. And it's a pretty easy thing to to modify. In, in. But you also had a question, second question about the weighting. Oh, Are yeah. showing yeah. lakes at a different projection? Yeah, and like, like I've seen those maps where it's like this is a map that a ship captain would use, and the captains are like tiny. Because it's like a, that's. I don't think that would be. Yeah, we're really overlapping. You would the lake would overlap the lake shore. Yeah, it'd be cool. And like. Or it would like yeah. kind of go, yeah, it wouldn't be aligned for sure. And I don't know, I mean, there's ways to do it. Um, you probably have to overlay data layers. Uh, any GIS servers might know. But, uh, yeah. No one would do it. Yeah. It would look pretty crazy. <laughs> yeah. Can you talk about the intelligence thing? Mm-hmm. Let's do cover. Yeah. <laughs> do you want to see it? Mike, we're not going to show it. Come on, come on. For the graphic? For the whole, for, for intelligence, the yeah? For the whole, yeah, for intelligence. Uh, I don't know how much yeah, the copy. actual... Yeah. All right, so... Yeah, uh, $5 dollar copy. We are look, we're actively uh, looking for any um, projects where we can take something we've already created or do something new, like for the chair, for the intelligentsia wall, um, something that's going to be the most awesome thing ever is our friend Dalen made his own CNC machine, and uh, we are going to take a Pilsen map, and he's going to put it in the computer, and it's going to cut Pilsen into a block of wood. Uh, Miri did that with Great Lakes. As a, he wants to do like a four foot by eight foot cut. Massive, massive cut. Somebody made a puzzle of the wards when they got redrawn. Because <laughs> 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 Sarah was like, you know, putting together my sort of knowing Chicago there, and I just needed to have a wall. How much would it cost? Uh, there's, I mean, there's different companies that can do this. So we, we usually work with uh, this company called Cushing. It's a local printer in River North. And uh, they actually did, they didn't do this one. I'm not quite sure. Uh, we, essentially, for this one, we just uh, gave them the image, and they, they did what they wanted. They didn't really showed us the final products until until I saw it in, in place, but uh, I think they did a pretty good job. Um, I've been to this intelligentsia, and I think, it could be wrong, are those vinyl stickers with the yeah. Like yeah. each one individually? Uh, no, 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 no. Okay. Um, they have, like, colors or something? Yeah, they're, it's kind of like wallpaper. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> no, I wouldn't. I wouldn't. <laughs> um, yeah. So it is a it's a vinyl wall decal, and then there there are some online companies that actually, uh, if you upload an image, they'll send you just a, a bunch of you know rolls to essentially just install on your own. Um, can't think of the names right now, uh, but uh, yeah, just. If you if you're really interested, I'd search just like vinyl wall decals, um, and there'll be like two or three you know, things that pop up almost immediately. So. And so if you're looking, I mean, for one of our maps, we'll essentially we'll just sell you the the graphic, right. the Illustrator file or PDF or something. Right. Yeah. Or if you're cool, we'll just give it to you. But yeah. <laughs> trade, trade yeah, services. I, yeah. <laughs> I have two kind of random questions. I just wonder what the room thinks. Do we, do we have the best CTA maps we could have? You know, especially on the train when you look up. <laughs> could that be a lot? Actually, no, I think I know the guy. Who did. So, what do you mean by better, right? Well, it doesn't need to be the scale. Yeah. Or, or should, or should they be? Right. For some of them to me are confusing. Is that just me? No, I find the loop. The loop circle yeah. is very confusing. Yeah. I don't see colors well. For example, so 
What I would like to see is when you walk out. When you walk out of a CTA station, I want to know where I am. You know, where I'm coming out, especially out. Coming Some from stations underground. have a big like road for whatever direction you're facing, like on the on the sidewalk. I think it's the same. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. There's one downtown that the old escalator now goes up. That's <laughs> <laughs> useful. So here's kind of another random one. My own experience with navigating O'Hare Airport is that the signage is terrible. Would would maps be something that would help you navigate something like O'Hare Airport? I think so. Is that what so. you go there? Yeah. As long as there's a you are here. Yeah. 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 There should be a, it should be a direction. There should be a map that's uh, basically kind of like a Google direction map, but specifically for OK, that would be cool. There might be. I went to Japan a couple years ago, and when I came back, I was just like completely baffled about how unclear the city was unmapped, like how uninformational all the different like areas are in Chicago, like in Japan, like Tokyo, like yeah. there's a map every hundred feet, yeah. and it's like awesome and beautiful, and it's like, I don't, you need to speak Japanese to walk around, it's like, you, don't, you can't get lost. There. But in Japan, the street numbers are chronological. Well, all European cities as well, like, I think, yeah. London. Yeah. And actually, I think, so Divi is a good... Yeah, Divi is helping, right? They're because helping people right? orient. It's good wayfinding. Yeah, so that's definitely a good step in our direction. I think CTA and other others could follow in Divi's footsteps and help people out. Yeah. Uh, the only other thing I want to mention was um, we also do some kind of... I personally do side projects, or I try to do side projects um, for causes that I support. One is uh, high-speed rail, um, and I just noticed the Midwest High-Speed Rail Association doesn't really have any like sexy maps <laughs> to appeal to people, so... They don't have any vinyl wall decals. Yeah, they don't have any vinyl wall decals <laughs> or, you know, homemade CNC machine produced prints, so um, we're going to do one for them, and then looking always open to ideas for kind of more map divisity projects. Um, that display a social problem or a solution to a problem in Chicago. So we're working on the map of the 606. Too. Yeah, we did one for the Bloomingdale Trail slash 606, uh, just as a because it was easy, just a line. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I have kind of a privilege question. Okay. okay. Um, you know, so you're talking about doing data or websites or anything productive, but I'd like to read military history. And uh, if you ever want to see some really rocky maps, um, look at any battle. And I was wondering just whether in the course of your work or your geographical training, whether you had any insights on the commonality um, that makes those maps so bad. <laughs> uh, I have to really see what you're talking about. Um, I think I have an idea of what you mean, but uh, I don't really. Well, a, a, a busy, a, like a lot of maps, a bad map in general is either too busy or, you know, there's too much text, there's too much, they're trying, there's too many objects in there, and uh, cartograph, obviously. <laughs> try to make things very streamlined and minimalist. nice, clean lines, minimalist. So, and, and I'm I'm a proponent of not including a north arrow unless you're reorienting the map because that's the default. Any of that. So, <laughs> north arrow is overrated. Highly overrated. <laughs> Do you? One of the huge problems I see with the current state of uh, web cryptography is that generally people put together a map to tell a story a lot of times. So they're like. First, and if you sit with someone who make the map, they'll walk these little kind of shit. They'll be like, zoom in here, check this out. Now pretend that this part was highlighted red. And like, you can imagine just using panning and zooming and changing the features of the map and so on to tell a story either work with spoken words or with written words. New York Times has done a little bit of this. They did a really nice uh, 
great long forms piece that had a little like map on the side that was scrolling down. Mm -hmm. as it was it was about a railroad, and as it would tell you what the pieces of the railroad, it would actually go to the right part. Yeah. So I'm talking about the opposite of that, mostly map, a little bit of text. So have you guys done anything in that direction, or or done any research on how you could mix narrative and mapping there? Yeah, uh, actually, I'm just working on this today. Um, so Esri SRI uh, has an online kind of GIS, uh, just our GIS online. It's, uh, it's not as, the, the functionality is not really there. Um, I mean, it's getting better every day. Um, but they offer this uh, service called Story Map. It's essentially linking geocoded points, reference points, to uh, kind of a picture timeline. Um, and uh, so that's that's kind of, you know, I think that's what you're talking about. I have a JavaScript version. Night Lab Story Map JS. Check it out. So, so. so and, and what about, uh, have you ever seen a Braille map? Ooh, Braille map, no. I've, there's, I have a friend who made a Braille map of the CTA routes. That's cool. Uh -huh. And it's it's not geographical, it's really a uh, representation of this connects you to this and this connects you to this. Oh, wow. So, it's really different. Um, that's fairly exception. Yeah, <laughs> you think we can work with our our friend with the CNC machine maybe on trying to? I don't know how that would work. Let me try to pull up the story map. Um, I, I have a comment on that Brielle map. Um, I so I think there was an article in the Economist that talked about how Braille has sort of been dying out as language, but now technology has sort of helped. Uh, in its renaissance, and I think what they're trying to do is create um, maps and text that can be felt through vibration screens in certain ways that mimic Braille. So I don't know if that would be a way to sort of change Well, that. I, I, I would just say that people who say that Braille is dying, well, I'm a high partial, right? <laughs> people who say Braille is dying now aren't completely blind. You have no other, there's nothing that's. I'm going to go to the economist. It's not fine. In our meet after the chapter meeting, we had a discussion about that article, and it's completely from, it's biased articles, completely from a cited perspective. So, just to say what, I mean, sorry, but. That's true to the point, it's the economist. So, perfect. Well, yeah, exactly. They'll be advocating throwing sulfur into the atmosphere on state. Biomarkable <laughs> <laughs> uh, so here is just a very basic uh, story map that we put together for Christian Lakefield. Um, we're actually presenting them to them tomorrow just to kind of uh, essentially inform them of our GIS services. So we've been working with them for the last six months, doing really nice base maps for them. But this is kind of or coming out as uh, more GIS uh, analysts. Um, so essentially, it's it's a pretty simple thing. You just geotag uh, these these points, and all you really do is um, import a CSV file into this um, into, the, into the map builder, essentially. And as long as you have you know URLs to pictures and uh, the right um, the right field names, then it all kind of falls into place, and it's it's pretty pretty easy to do uh, to to use and um, to format. So. These are just some of their like retail properties, just for kind of an example of what they can, how they can use it to kind of market their, um, their properties. So there you go. Have you ever attempted a map that's kind of dynamic in time? Uh, no. Um, can you Google Torch? Oh yeah, Torch tor map. Yeah, from uh, CardiDB has. So if you ever have any any uh, we can go to Clear Street that looks <laughs> that page is really slow there. Right? Uh, so that mentioned in the uh, is that right? Uh, yeah. So you want the second first that one looks bad. I think you have a use. So this is if you have a data set of things in space that also have time. So who is the planets in 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 time one, time two, time three, time four? This will animate for you just like automatically. Whoa. Yeah. Um, oh, man. So it doesn't matter what it is. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> so easy to impress. <laughs> <laughs>
This is really a good one. Speaking of historical uh, combat maps, there's one for World War One. All of the sh shipping that happened, all the boats. Oh, I was just thinking, sir, is that uh, that that would make a lot of sense. That would flow the battle because it evolves. Yeah. There was that great one at the um, uh, Field Museum map exhibit <laughs> where it it uh, had um, a running total of the casualties on each side and then the uh, position of the troops. Well, it was like <laughs> weekly for the four years. I can also speak to Torque. I used it to show the, the uh, fatality, traffic fatalities in 2012 in the U.S. 33,000 people who died. Oh, yeah. Great, great, terrible man. Generally, you make maps are done on video, and it's like either video or you do it with a tool called processing, with its own drop mess, or you do static maps in RJS, or you do webby maps. Oh, yes. And there's kind of not, there's these kind of like walls in between. But it's working starting to kind of blur the value. Okay, definitely can check that out. So, what was the first tool you said? Processing? Yeah, processing is a data, visualiz data visualization with animation. Did you go to processing.org? Oh, oh, no. Okay. Oh, sorry. <laughs> this, is, uh, this is something similar that I, that I found. This is uh, all the nuclear tests uh, since 1945. Yeah. There's a sound component to this, too. Oh, yeah, it's really it's super low. Yeah, it's very. Yeah, it's very Especially when you get to like, the end, it's just like. Yeah, here. It's pretty. Uh, Dark, more than that. Yeah. Oh, yeah, and they got a little tally at the top of yeah. it. Yeah. And the We're winning! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I just think it's you can make music out of it. Look at this. Yeah, that's when they were like nuking all those islands. Yeah, but this is Does it work? Yeah. There's no. Oh, God. <laughs> yeah, I really like the sound. Yeah. It's like on the end. It's like Brian Yeah. Okay, cool. Well, thank, uh, thanks, guys, for coming and presenting.